Hello everyone this is Tuba Mirza and welcome to Recoding All the code used inside this video are mentioned inside the description box So if you like the work we are doing and if you're learning something from our videos please do subscribe to our channel and share it with your group because your subscription will make this type of video happen in the future So without any further ado let's get started Organizing view inside Swift UI is a piece of cake Swift UI has APIs like stacks, horizontal grid, and vertical grid that are used to create impossible design in Swift UI. But these APIs have some complexity when shapes become more complex. To ease these complexities, Swift UI 4 introduces a new grid API, which helps us to manage the grid layout with two-dimensional control parameters. Before we start this video we recommend you to watch the tables in Swift UI 4 video which is made using this grid API and we also recommend you to watch all the Swift UI 4 videos inside the playlist link inside the description section So now let's start with learning a new grid API To create a grid we need to type the grid keyword and inside the closure We add the grid row just by typing grid row keyword and adding the closure. Inside the closure, we can add our content which we want to show inside the grid row. Each item inside the grid row will be aligned in a horizontal manner. As we type the grid row, it will add row in a vertical way. The grid API has some parameters inside it. The first parameter is the position. It will help to align the position of all the elements inside the grid row. The second parameter is horizontal spacing. It helps to create horizontal space between elements inside the grid row. And final parameter is vertical spacing. It helps to add vertical space between each grid row. So these are some of the basics of the grid API. We will learn some more features of the grid ahead in our video. Let's now check out some basic shape designs using grid API. We have already created a new Swift UI project inside Xcode. Inside the body variable, we add the grid keyword. Then inside the closure we add a grid row inside it. Then inside the grid row add some text view. Now let's create another similar grid row with a larger text view. We can now see that as we type more text inside the view, we can see that the grid column aligns automatically with the length of text view which has a larger view frame. Now add a divider view between grid row. We can see that all the grid row expand to take the space of full view. We can make a divider take less space similar to our grid row size. Add a grid cell and size axis modifier and inside it add a parameter of horizontal. It will take the size of the grid row. Now add the grid inside a navigation stack view. Now let's see what's the difference between stacks and grid API. First, create a V stack. Inside it, create H stack. And add a text view inside it. Then add divider. Similarly, add another H stack with text view. Here we can see that space between each H stack is not equal as it places an item just after the first item without taking similar space from above H stack. But inside the grid view we can see that it has equal space in each grid row. Now create another Swift UI view, call it a box view. Inside the body add grid view. Add a grid row. 
Inside the grid draw add color view and type the color modifier as yellow. Then add another grid row and add color view. Add some corner radius in both the view. Add some padding inside below the grid view. Now add some more color to the first grid row as we add color inside the first grid row. The second grid row automatically shrinks to match the column similar to the first grid row. Now change the color of the color view. Then remove the color from the first row. And to move the grid item inside the first grid row, add a clear color view. This will move the color view to the second column. Similarly, add more grid rows below the second row and add some more grid items to it. Similarly, to move the grid item inside the first and second rows, add a clear color view in both rows. Now add another grid row. Inside it add a for each loop and start it from 0 and end it less than 7. Inside the closure we add a new color view. Now add the grid row below the third grid row in reverse order to the second and first. So we can see that we can achieve the grid pattern. Now add a rotation effect by adding angle. We can see that we can rotate the view, add title animation and we can see some amazing pattern design. Let's now see some other modifiers of grid API. One of the modifiers of grid draw is the grid cell anchor. It helps to move the grid item inside the grid draw to any side user wants inside the view frame. Grid API already has the modifier of alignment, but if developers want to reset a specific grid row, anchor, they can use the grid cell anchor modifier and pass the position they want to place. Similarly, we can also add a grid cell anchor modifier inside the grid row item, also to specify the anchor position of the item inside the grid row. Another wonderful modifier is the grid cell column. It helps to merge columns when there is no column created and has extra space. To use this feature, we need to add a grid cell column modifier below the grid row item and tell how many columns we need to merge. So these are all the modifiers present inside the new grid API. Let's now see these modifiers in action. Create a new Swift UI view, call it a small large view. Create a new Swift UI view, call it a small view. Inside it create a constant as color which confirms to color and it will require an initializer when the view is created.
Then inside the body add a frame to this color constant of width and height as 5050 and add some corner radius. Similarly, create another Swift UI view as a large box. Inside the body view, add a grid closure. Inside it, add grid row and add a single small box with color and a large box with color. Change the size of the frame inside the large box view to 200. Similarly, add another grid row below the first grid row. Add another box view in the first and second row. Now copy the first and second rows and paste them below. Now in the grid add the alignment parameter and add position as per your need. Here we can see that view which has a smaller view frame move to where we set our grid alignment. Add some horizontal and vertical spacing. Now let's reset the cell anchor by adding a grid cell anchor modifier just below the first grid row. Here we can see that only the first row has a different anchor. Similarly, we can also set individual cell anchors by adding a grid cell anchor modifier just below each grid cell. Let's now increase the size of our small box to 100. Inside the second grid row, just remove the small box and add a color clear view. We can see that the clear view tries to take up all the spaces left between the grid. To make this view take similar space as a large box view, we can use a grid cell unsized axis modifier and add an array of horizontal and vertical axis. This will reduce the size of the view to match the large box inside the grid. Let's now see how the merge cell work inside the grid. To do so inside the third grid, Remove all the other boxes. Add a grid cell column and type how many columns you need to merge. As we can see that a view has only three columns, we can type three here to merge all these columns. Now remove the small box. And add a color view with yellow color. and add grid cell unsize axis modifier with horizontal only. Add some corner radius. Now here we can see that a cell has merged here. So this is how we use grid API in Swift UI 4. There are many ways we could use grid in an app. Here are some examples of how we could use it in some app. There are many other amazing ways we could implement it. And yes, let us know what you liked or disliked about this video in the comment section. Please do like and subscribe to our channel. And yes, do not forget to suggest some more topics.
For now, I'll be signing off. We'll definitely see you all in the next video.